I'm Donald Leggett and welcome to the latest London South East CEO interview. I'm joined today by John Wood, CEO of AIM Listed Infrastructure, who specialise in shipyards and energy storage infrastructure. Indeed, since we last spoke, Infa have purchased the Appledore Shipyard in North Devon. Welcome, John. Thank you, Donald. Good to uh, be back here again. It's great to see you again and it's great to see the business uh, uh, developing and expanding. Yeah, well, I mean, it's been an exciting year for us. Um, you know, nearly a year ago, we bought the, the Harland and Wolf site in Belfast. On the, the 5th of December, we got the keys. And uh, by jings, a lot's happened since then, hasn't it? It has indeed. You now have two defined legs to the infrastructure strategy, shipbuilding and gas infrastructure projects. So well, des describe progress for us since we last spoke in April. Well, I think we've got a global pandemic, but, but I'll leave that to one side for now. Um, when you look at the, the overall business of, of what, what's happened to us, you mentioned shipbuilding. It's not just shipbuilding. I think everybody sees shipyards as just building ships. What we've actually got is five different markets that we're in, in six different um, sectors within those um, markets. And you look at the, the, the markets, we've got defence, lots of interesting stuff going on in defence. We've got renewables, we've got commercial, we've got oil and gas, and we've got cruise and ferry. So really the, the thing that's with shipyards over the years, they've always focused on one area um, inside those, those markets. And if that area takes a downturn, for example, with defence, there's always peaks and troughs in it. As soon as you've got a peak, there's no work in the shipyard, you lose all your skilled workforce. What we are keen to do is keep spread our portfolio across the different markets so that regardless if there is peaks and troughs, we, we still have a balanced portfolio. But more importantly is what happens with inside the, these different markets. So you've got the technical design and engineering part at the beginning of the life cycle. You then move into the, the fabrication. Now fabrication, everybody thinks of a shipyard just fabricating ships. That's not the case. I mean, in this day and age, you, you can fab fabricate parts of ships, whole ships. Um, but it's more into renewables that the yard has carried out already one of the biggest renewable projects in the UK um, several years ago. So we know it's got tried and tested track record for renewable projects. And that's really because of the loadout and the size of the, 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 uh, the yard, you know. And do you have the sufficient skills to go straight into renewables? I mean, you know, R&D and uh, design, all those different things? If you look at where we are at the moment, we started off um, with 60 people uh, when we bought the yard. We're now up to around 200 um, with some, 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 some contractors thrown in there. Um, in, in some of the projects we're working on at the moment, um, we're actually not focusing on the design side of it. We're focusing on purely the fabrication that we've got the skills in-house that we can do. And there's some lumpy fabrication projects out there within the UK and for the ex export market. And what we did when we started back in Belfast, we had a, a three-tiered strategy for getting the, the yard back up and running. One was getting the Belfast dock up and running at 335 metres. The second was getting the, the building dock up. Then with the pandemic, we took a bit of an advantage of that and said we'll do some uh, maintenance on the dock gate in the Belfast dock with things being a bit slower, so we got that out of the way, we knew we'd have to do it anyway. Um, and then the next exciting part that we're on is really getting that fabrication um, part of the business ramped up before the end of this year. Okay, and contracts are coming in, are they? Well, I think if you look at contracts, it's probably worth starting with the, the pipelines that are out there, um, as in we, we've probably got about seven billion um, of an unweighted pipeline, once you put a weighting on that, that's down to about 1.7 billion. Um, when you look at work in tender at the moment, there's several hundred million um, of tenders that are out there wait, waiting on awards coming through. Um, so look, we, we're fairly optimistic um, about where we are, um, and it's about making sure we've got enough space rather than worrying about the 120 odd he acres that we've got between the two sites in Belfast and Appledore. Okay. Appledore, uh, where did that come from? Last time we spoke, you, you weren't the proud owner of a, of a shipyard in North Devon. Um, Appledore is a really great strategic fit for Belfast, because obviously, as you know, Belfast's got the, the top end of the market, a docket, 336 metres and 556 metres. So you've got those two big docks, um, two biggest in the UK, 
um, in one of the two biggest um, in, in Europe. You then look at some of the smaller works around patrol boats, customs vessels, ferries, and that sort of thing that are really too big for that yard. And I think when you look at the renewables work that we know is coming along, and I'll talk more on renewables uh, in a minute, but you look at that renewable work coming along, we really don't want to clog um, Belfast up with some of these smaller yards. Whereas when you look at Abeldoor, it's the, the biggest, probably the best small yard in the UK, fully undercover, um, that's just sitting there waiting to, uh, to be brought back into service. So. So far, what we've done with that since we, we got it in, in the announcement, we mentioned that it was a it was going to be next year before we actually started trading um, out of there. We've got the slipway. There's two sides of that business. You've got the slipway um, for docking vessels up to 95 metres on the slip. Then you've got the um, dry dock that can build. We're in the middle of taking the gates out of that, um, of the building dock, converting that a little bit so we can not just building it, but we can actually float vessels in to repair them if there's holes in the, the new build um, slots. I think we've had inquiries um, of 13 new build vessels for Apple Door um, since we did the, the acquisition. So we're looking at several of them now, but it's a great little facility, um, direct load out and access um, straight straight to the, the, the sea. So we are uh, quite proud of that. It's a freehold asset as well. Um, so look, there's lots around that, and I think the, given the increase in the renewables um, in the Irish Sea and the proximity to Belfast, what it does, it actually de-risks our offering, whether it's constructing ships, whether it's power stations, whether it's renewable projects, um, it gives us that opportunity to, to build stuff in Apple send it to Belfast, build stuff in Belfast, send it down to um, Apple Road. And uh, I suppose one of my bigger questions is where, did, where does the funding for the Apple Door purchase come from? Well, I think when you look at um, the structure of the deal, um, we split over three years. So it's a combination of cash and shares. Um, and then we see that uh, organically generated uh, future cash flows um, will cover the uh, acquisition cost of that yard. So it was really, we're quite proud of the, the bit of business and the, the value that we, we acquired the yard for, um, give, given where we were. Um, so we see that as really being a, a crown and a crown jewel in our uh, portfolio, you know. Okay. Uh, we've mentioned the current state of play at Harlow's and Wolf. You talked to me briefly through the order book. Is, is there anything specifically coming up? I mean, what can you, what can you well, put, put numbers to? With, with us being in this environment, I'm it's really he hesitant to put numbers to, to anything um, because things change. I mean, we, we had one order for 60 million. We had the verbal on it. Uh, one day and it was cancelled the next day. So uh, it will not cancel, but postponed and kicked into the long grass. So I think That's you need right. to be a bit cautious. Um, but look, we've had um, 19 vessels through that yard already um, since it's opened. And I think the first vessel came in on the 23rd of December uh, when we got the keys on the 5th. So that was really uh, encouraging that we got a vessel in so quick. We've had a multitude of vessels through there. And what on the docking and repair side, we see a fairly steady flow of work now booked into the yard coming through um, and we're in final negotiations probably on three fabrication contracts um, but look, not, nothing's ever done until uh, you've got a signed piece of paper in front of you you know. Um, have you got people working in the yard currently? Yeah there's, as I said earlier um, I think there's about 200 uh, bodies in the yard um, working on different um, ship repair projects that are in there. So we've kind of kept that number, we've slowly ramped up. One of the things we're keen not to do is ramp up, then lay off, then ramp up. Um, so we're looking to keep that um, steady workforce um, all together as we go through. And I think, you know, we've, we've also got the project um, undertaken down in Appledore on the dock gates. So we've actually got a couple of guys from Belfast across assisting with that project. Um, in addition to, to some local uh, labour that we've employed down in Appledore, which was really encouraging to see the, the, the first the, the local guys coming across the, uh, the, the entrance, way, entrance way to the yard, you know. Okay, let's talk uh, government policy. I saw you, I saw you uh, charming the pants of Boris in Appledore. Good man, <laughs> well done. <laughs> well, I think... Uh, you, you look at... Uh, there's, a, there's an upcoming defence review. Let me take you take to this. There's an upcoming defence review 
it's promising extra money for the Navy. Will that make a difference to you guys, Harlan Wolf, Appledore and uh, Belfast? Well, if you believe everything our Prime Minister says, I would like to think it will. Um, he, he assured me he'd be doing what he could to help the British shipbuilding, which we're a key cornerstone of. And look, there's numerous projects that we're involved in, and I think look, it's a, a collaborative approach we're involved in, from collaborating with the, with the main um, shipbuilders here in the UK, collaborate, collaborating with overseas shipbuilders. We see an export market. I think if you look in the, the, the government arena, it's what I would call sovereign vessels. We know there's 110 vessels that need to get built in the next 10 years. If we get that sovereign piece with the government saying we're going to build vessels in the UK rather than send them overseas, well, hey, that's a great start, isn't it? And I think that that's the peak place we're going to with government. I think they finally realised that. And when you look at the defence... Do, do, do you get a sense that the government are going to say build British from now on in? There's going to be an element of Brit British in renewables and in defence spending? I think there is. And I think you, you only have to look at the, the recent announcements for FFS, for example, where um, they said that they look um, for predominantly British built, but they'd encourage international partnerships, which is really an important thing to ensure technology transfer um, and keeping the UK um, up to speed with where it needs to go and also protects our export market. You don't want everything to be, be UK 100%. If everybody did that, you'd kill the export market. So look, I think there has to be a fine balance. And I think when you look at what's happened in the renewable industry, you know, there's been decades worth um, of renewable projects that have all gone straight overseas again. I think the noises we're hearing now um, is that renewable projects will be 60%, um, 50 60% UK content. Now, if that's the case, um, th there's not enough uh, shipyards um, in, in fabrication facility in the UK. I mean, if you look at the, the numbers um, that they were talking about to get up to um, the, the number of homes that were going to be powered, because look, don't forget there's 85% of the UK homes are powered at the moment by gas and gas central heating. And look, and the, 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 this is all part of the, the, the government's green energy review, it, which was announced yesterday. It, it that, is. That's, that's what you're alluding to, yeah? It, it, and look, there's, uh, there's a transition period, and this is where it gets really exciting for Infrastrata and the strategy we put together. Look, out of that, that green policy that came together, out of the 10 points, Boris's 10 key points, we've hit five of them, and we've ticked five boxes. So a 50% hit rate on that, we're, we're fairly happy with. But there'll be a transition period. And look, to convert to electricity, the first thing that's going to have to happen before that this new wave of renewable projects comes in is you're actually going to have to provide electricity. Where's the electricity going to come from? gas-fired power stations. Um, where's the gas going to come from, from the gas power stations? Well, given that we're exiting the EU and we've got a decline in production in the UK, storage comes into a phenomenal focus on keeping storage and increasing storage in the UK. Because don't forget, we only supply, we have 2% of our annual demand in storage compared with the Netherlands, that has got 25 to 30%. So we're really low on storage anyway. And look, when there's a cold snap and there's pressure on the system, the EU is not going to open up the door now and send us any gas. They're going to look after their own members first. So I think, you know, we, we published um, recently a, a couple of comments on the state of the, the network, and we, we had an independent um, study put together on our behalf um, that, that kind of highlights there's going to be power blackouts and power brownouts going forward due to that security supply. But... Look, when you look at the gas storage and how that plays into the, the energy and the green plan, it's really, you know, that project, in my mind, will start out is storage and gas, then it will transition to hydrogen as we move to that hydrogen economy um, further down the line. So the, the, the carbons are capable of storing hydrogen technically. There's no big issues there. Okay, we're talking about, we've turned to Island McGee gas storage project now. So mm. in essence, the question you need to answer here is, where are, you, where, where are you at with it? Because uh, you've been a, a year looking for a, a marine licence, but it still hasn't turned up. So you've called in the lawyers. I like that. Is that a, symbol, is that a symbolic sort of, you know, fisticuffs up to Dira, perhaps? Well, look, I think, Donald, you need, you need to look at these things. We, we spent a year. Yeah, we inherited a project that, look, had a few things that were incomplete. So we went through 
fix the incomplete things, and then we su we submitted the documentation into DIRA almost a year ago. Um, you know, we've gone through one consultation. Um, DIRA phoned us up and asked us they had made made a mistake in the process. So could we do another one? Being the nice type of people we are, we agreed to do another consultation without making a song and dance about it, which delayed us a bit, but we accepted it. Um, and the, the, then DIRA have constantly just tried to put roadblocks in the way and additional things into the process here. And I think, you know, one of the key things is around the abstraction and the discharge license, where they the said, oh, well, you need to do a, another consultation for those. Um, and look, we didn't believe that was the, the case. Yes. We then instructed lawyers who, again, concurred with us that that wasn't the case. Um, we spoke do, to do, 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 you, do you think that DIRA, perhaps, are listening to the, the Court of Public Opinion, uh, but legally they should be saying yes? Well, I think look, legally we then went and got a legal opinion of, of the leading barrister, which, to be fair, is a, a barrister that DIRA have used themselves many times before. Ah. Um, so an it, independent it, opinion, then? Absolutely. And, you know, he, he's 100% saying that there's no reason why that this should be pre proceeding. And look, there is a few, um, as you know, there's a few local protesters, um, you know, that, that, that don't see the value in the project. But if you look at Northern Ireland and the island of Ireland as a whole, we've got tremendous support for the project. And, you know, all you need is for the lights to dim once, um, and the support for the project will quadruple overnight as well, you know. Okay, so throw to the future. You, you, you're interviewing yourself here, John. <laughs> uh, where do you see yourself in 24 months' time? Well, if you look where we were a, a year ago, uh, we've certainly moved a long way um, in 12 months. And I think that we've turned the business around from being a, a one-project business to a multifaceted business covering several industries. We're hitting the majority of the government key criteria as we go forward. So I think look, the strategy we set, you really start to see that strategy play out now. Um, and I think look, when you go through, we've got the, the, the key bit is vertically integrating what we do. So that fabrication piece in the, the shipyards, really playing into the, the, the storage project. You know, where are we going? Obviously, hydrogen is a key area of interest that, that we're already looking at. We're probably not looking at the front end of hydrogen. We'll leave that, the, the development of that to the, 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 the big companies with lots of money to waste on R&D. Um, we're probably looking at that back end of storage piece with hydrogen in the network potentially. Um, tidal, we see a massive opportunity around tidal um, battery storage. I think that, that there's, there's a place to play there. And it's really finding an entry point into some of these projects, obviously wind, um, on the fabrication side, um, but if anything comes up on the development side, we may look at that. Um, but it's really, you know, for us, that there's a couple of criteria that's really, you know, we've broken even uh, in um, September on the, the shipyard um, repair and maintenance side, um, uh, the docking um, business. We've got the fabrication side really to ramp up. So really, you probably see a bit of lull so we get things ramped up on, on the shipyard side of the business and fabrication. We want that cooking on gas, but then we're looking at further development projects. And I think, you know, you look at, as I said, the last time we spoke, I think we've got 37 key elements of each project we're looking at to see if it hits the strategy. Um, and, you know, we evaluate every project we look at. The FSRU project that we've not spoken about, it's probably slipped further down the list a little bit with some of the other uh, more interest and renewable type projects um, creeping further up. And that's really around funding and getting the funding away for those projects. But, you know, with Island McGee being a shovel ready project, ready to go, there's, there's a lot, lot more funding opportunities available for that project than there was, say, 12 months ago. So, whilst we've had a, a, an issue with a marine license, it, it might be that instead of you know, selling the project equity, a project equity, a project level, it may be there's opportunities for us now to keep more um, equity in that project. So, you know, where, where there's uh, downsides, you usually find upside luck in some place in the corner, you know. Yes, indeed. John Wood, CEO of Infrastrata, that was absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much for your update and so much going on. Uh, thank you very much indeed.
Um, if you want to see more interviews like this one, then uh, subscribe to the London Southeast uh, YouTube channel. Uh, you can find us on Twitter. So do follow us on Twitter. And you may even find me at Donald Leggett uh, on Twitter as well. Uh, thank you very much for watching and do, in these difficult times, stay safe. <laughs>